What's up guys? Recently I've been getting a lot of comments here on YouTube about my audio, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you guys how I set up, record, and edit my audio for YouTube. Thanks for checking out another video. My name is Anthony and I make videos that I hope will teach and inspire you to make better videos. If that's something you're into, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you're notified every time I post a new video. If you find anything useful out of this video, hit that thumbs up. So how do I start setting up my audio for video? Well, it all starts with the microphone placement. If you don't have the proper placement of a microphone, then you're not getting the best result you can, no matter how much you paid for it. So right now, I'm actually using a shotgun microphone that's overhead. The mic that I'm currently using is a Rode VideoMic NTG, and it's plugged straight into the camera. The one thing that I really love about the Rode VideoMic NTG over any other mic that I've used so far is that it has a safe channel on it. So right now, I'm recording the left side of my channel at nominal gain, and the right side of my channel is 20 dB quieter, so if I were to yell or clap, um, one side one side is super loud and probably distorted. In fact, I just saw it peak over here on my screen. But on the right side, I can recover those because I'm using a safe channel. Now, I made a video comparing that to my Tackstar SGC598, and you can watch that right here. But stick along on this video for now so that you can see how I take this and edit it so that I get the best result possible using this mic. Also, the room that you're recording in is gonna affect it a lot. I'm in a small room right now, so you're getting a lot of echo from the walls. So what I did was I tried to sound treat this room and you can watch that video where I made DIY sound panels right here as well. Having audio panels, even the little bit of audio panels that I have in this room right now is a huge help. It cuts down on the reflections and I can tell immediately when I did it that it helped a ton. Starting off with a good quality recording is the number one tip that I can give you guys for recording and editing good, clean audio. If you start off with a good thing, 99% of the time you'll end up with a good quality product. And I've got another audio set up over here for my desk where I do all my tutorials. So let's jump over there and I'll show you that audio setup right now. All right, so here it is. This is where I do all of my Premiere Pro tutorials and things that I need to uh, use my computer to capture uh, the screen recording for. I hope I was in focus the last time. If not, forgive me, I forgot to have this in autofocus. I'm gonna go ahead and try to do this pretty quickly and show you guys exactly how I do it from start to finish. All right, so what I've done is I went ahead and got some footage that I'm pretty sure is gonna make the cut for this video. Right there is where the intro will come in, so I'll go ahead and grab that piece of footage and put that in there as well. YouTube intro 2020. Another reason to stay organized, you know what I mean? Just keep it, keep it all in there and organized so that you know where everything is. So let's go ahead and start editing my dialogue audio here. First step is to check out the waveforms and make sure that as I'm talking, there's no clipping in that left channel. So I'm looking at this and it doesn't look like there is. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and go to audio channels and select the left channel for both of those channels so that when you're when I press play, you don't get that weird audios only on one side thing. So now I've got... What's up guys? Recently I've been getting a lot of comments here on YouTube about my audio. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you guys how I set up, record, and edit my audio for YouTube. So that already sounds pretty good, but I think we can make it sound a little bit better by adding a little bit of EQ and you can hear a little bit of room noise even though the room is treated you can see in this shot actually some of those sound panels that i've got on my ceiling and this is my background wall and there's no sound panels over there so as uh, i've got my shotgun mic pointed towards me you can hear some of the reflections that are coming off of that wall but it's a sacrifice that i make for the video because it's a little bit of give and take when it comes to video versus audio 
Sometimes it can't be perfect, but you make it as best as you can for what you've got. Now, this is from some pretty clean audio because I was able to get the mic really close to my head, about four inches away from the fleur de lis on my hat right there. This was pretty clean, but I can still hear some reflections in it and uh, you can definitely EQ this microphone to sound a little bit better, a little bit more full. So let's dive into the EQs and see what we can do here. We'll go over to effects. We'll just type in parametric EQ. We'll just place that right there on the track. We'll go ahead and edit that. Another thing that I like to do, set an in and out point, click that loop playback button right there. If you don't have it, it's really easy to find. You just go over here to this plus and you'll find the loop playback in this section. And all you'll do from there is drag that onto your button layout and click OK. Now we've got a looped playback. So I'm at the end of this. You can see right now I'm at the end of it, but it's going to start playing at the beginning because I'm already at the end. So here we go. Thanks for checking out another video. My name is Anthony and I make videos that I hope will teach and inspire you to make better videos. The first thing we're going to do is actually take all of this energy right here that's just kind of muddying up everything. If that's something you're into, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Everything 100 hertz and under is inaudible. You're not going to be able to hear it anyway, so we're just going to cut that out. So we'll go up to about 90 to 100 hertz somewhere in there and hit the bell icon so that you're notified every time I post a new video. Next thing, I and I make videos that I hope will tune into around the 200 to 500 range and get rid of some of that low mid thing that's happening. Teach and inspire you to make better videos. If that's something you're into, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you're notified every time I post a new video. So to me, it was starting to ring right there at around 400, a little bit more than 400, maybe 430. So I'll bring that down about four decibels or so. Thanks for checking out another video. My name is Anthony and I make videos that I hope will teach and inspire you to make better videos. Usually at this point, I'll go ahead and accentuate the 100 Hertz and then bring down everything from around 500 and just see how that. If that's something you're into, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that. That might be a little too much. So let's go up. That you're notified every time I post a new for vocals, it's usually safe to say that you can cut right around a thousand hertz, but sometimes it's the 2000 range as well. This Rode VideoMic NTG does a really good job of maintaining a good even pattern all the way around the frequency range though. So, so you gotta be careful not to make too many cuts or accentuations when it comes to EQing a, a mic that picks up really well. New video. Thanks for checking out another video. My name is Anthony and I make videos that I hope will teach and inspire you to make better videos. Thanks for checking out another video. My name is Anthony and I make videos that I hope will teach and inspire you to make better videos. If that So it sounds good to me like this. So the next thing we need to do is make sure that the levels are evened out. So let's go into the audio panels and we'll select all of those and hit dialogue. What we did right there is we just told Adobe Premiere Pro that these tracks are dialogue tracks. So we can go in now and say auto match and it's going to auto match that whole thing to an industry standard. You might see right here where it says auto match to target loudness of negative 23 LUFS. And that's an industry standard um, measurement of energy. So it actually analyzes the energy level of the waves that are present in these audio tracks and somehow using Adobe Magic levels everything out to right around negative 23 loops. The next thing I want to do is find some music for this section. So um, I'm going to go to Soundstripe for that. And that's super easy right here in my Adobe audio panels. So Soundstripe has a Premiere Pro plugin that you can do for this and if that's something you're into make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you're notified i kind of like that song i'll use that right here and my project title is already there it is for youtube i want to download the mp3 so that i can save space on my hard drive it's not really going to make that much difference in this one and it already added it automatically to my project. So now all I have to do is add it here. I'm already in my audio panels, so I'll just assign that as music and loudness, auto match that loudness. And because I auto matched loudness for the music and the voice, 
um, it should be pretty close. Thanks for checking out another video. My name is Anthony and I make videos that I hope will teach and inspire you to make better videos. If that's something you're into, make sure to subscribe to the channel and Simple as that. All right, I think that sounds pretty good. So let's go over to where I'm using this microphone and I'll show you how I edit those as well. We'll probably do a similar EQ to what we just did with the screen recording for. All right, so here it is. This is where I do all of my Premiere Pro tutorials and think that EQ sounds pretty good, I think. And now we'll go to the dialog and auto match. We'll put on a dynamic. And now if I drag this over, all of these audio tracks should be fairly leveled. Let's see what it sounds like with the microphone placement. All right, so here it is. This is where I do all of my Premiere Pro tutorial. And I think that sounds pretty good. You wanna be the proper distance away from your microphone and you want to record it properly and then you can take it and do all the steps that I just did to make your video pop. I'm gonna finish editing this and hopefully have it up for you guys soon. So if you're watching this, then I've finished. So if you like this video or if you're just a kind human, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. I make videos that I hope will teach and inspire you to make better videos. I'm Anthony. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.